Now, Robbie Nielsen is by far the most under pressure manager in the entire SPL. Over the last six games, Hearts have picked up just six points. Aberdeen, subsequently, have picked up 15 points. Hibs have even picked up nine points. And St Mirren have picked up eight points. It's been terrible. Now, back in January, Hearts faced Aberdeen and they slaughtered them 5 0. And at that point, Hearts held a nine point lead over the Dons and it was looking at doom and gloom for them as well. Since then, Aberdeen have gone on a fantastic run under Barry Robson, as well as that, they've even beat us 3 0, and it could have been a lot more as well only a few weeks ago to narrow the gap down to just one singular point. Now, I believe that Aberdeen will finish in third place. I think they will overtake us next week, if not the week after that. And as well as that, St Mirren and Hibbs, they might finish above us as well. Now, this is a massive concern, considering the fact that we had such a massive, massive gap between these three teams as well. And our away performances have just been terrible. We've only won three away games all year round in the league as well, which for a team that's supposed to be the third best team in Scotland, that's nowhere near good enough. Now, the weekend just gone by, Hearts went to Rugby Park. Now, Kilmarnock in the last five games prior to this, they only picked up two points and they have been in God awful form. However, the last time we went there, we needed a Nathaniel Atkinson left footed volley from out of nowhere to even get a point from there. And as well as that, they've already beaten us at home this year as well. They have been a tiny bit of a bogey team. But Robbie set his team up there, set him in a 4 3 3. No one was complaining at that. Everyone's been complaining that the 5 5 at the back does not work, which I agree with, it does not work. So I think we were all just happy to see that he was going to go for it and go the 4-3-3 route. Now the game started off really well for Hearts as well. Lauren Shanklin got the ball on the right hand side of the edge of the box and he absolutely drilled it into the bottom left corner. 1-0 Hearts. All looks like it's going pretty well. However, Xander Clark decides after having so many fantastic games for us this season, he decides to have his first awful game. Now it didn't help that he was wearing metal studs on the AstroTurf, however, he, the shot gets played into him and if you don't feel confident enough to catch it or you think you're going to drop it, you need to parry it away from goal. He goes to catch it, drops it, albeit it was a powerful shot, however it falls to the Gomonic player's feet and he goes in, misses the ball, penalty to Gomonic and is slotted away fairly decently. So after 1-1, you're hoping for a response from the players. You're hoping that the senior players and the creative players such as Snodgrass, uh, Ginelli, even Forrest as well, Grant, that they can get on the ball, play with confidence and get us going again. However, it didn't and Kilmarnock had the ball on the left-hand side, crossed the ball in, Xander misses it completely and the ball just goes into an empty net. And Kilmarnock take the lead from there, going into half-time. Second half comes out, changes were made at half time, but nothing. There was absolutely nothing. Side to side, very predictable, very easy to play against, no creative spark whatsoever. It was just absolutely diabolical. They even go down to 10 men. After that, you think, well, you've got to be piling on the pressure. No, <laughs> not at all. They just kind of went a bit blase, didn't go for it at all no chances that I can remember anyway. Now one of the big worries is that the subs didn't really do an awful lot. Humphreys, Oda and Barry Mackay all came on. Mackay, okay, had a few runs at the Kilmarnock defence, looked alright. Humphreys didn't do a lot. Oda, I don't know if he even touched the ball. Cochrane for Kingsley, and what even happened there? I, I, again, I don't think he even touched the ball. And then Clark comes off at halftime for Ross Stewart, who, to be fair to him, didn't really have an awful lot to do in the second half as well. But there was no creativity there. Now, that's what I think is a very big problem in the team. I think that we've only got two creative players at the whole club. And I think that is Mackay and Snodgrass. 
Now, Mackay, when he first came in, looked fantastic, looked very creative, and he was getting in between defenders, taking them on. He was going left, going right. You had no idea where he was going to go. He didn't have a lot of speed on him, but his passing ability, his shooting prowess, his crossing, it was all fantastic. This season, we've not really seen an awful lot of that. And the same kind of goes for Snodgrass. Snodgrass came in, and it, when we gave the ball to him in midfield, he was fantastic. He was playing like a quarterback. He was picking out passes. He was unlocking the defences. Now, teams just man-mark him, and we can't do anything about it. Now, as well as the lack of creativity, one of the other problems that I thought that we had against Kilmarnock was not the fact that the players weren't trying hard, that I believe that they actually were putting in a bit of a shift there as well, but it was more the lack of hunger. I didn't believe that anyone was really hungry enough to go get an equaliser, to go even try and get a winner, especially after they went down to 10 men. I think they were playing hard, I think they were chasing chasing the ball well, I think they put on a bit of pressure, but no one really looked like they really wanted to go out, win it, and grab the game by the scruff of the neck. Now moving on to everyone's favourite topic at the minute, the manager, Robbie Nielsen. The next three games for him before the split absolutely massive. He's got St Mirren, Hibernian and Ross County. Now, he needs to aim to get nine points from that. Will he? Probably not, especially in the form that we've been in at the minute as well. But something that will probably not happen as well that a lot of fans are clamouring for is his resignation or for him to be sacked. Now, I feel like I am in the minority here. I'm not calling for Nielsen's head. I don't think he should be sacked. At least, not yet anyway. Who is going to be brought in for the last eight or so games that's going to do a better job than him? Or get us to finish third? No one off the top of my mind. I know a lot of people have been saying that they even want David Martindale. Not for me. I do not think it is the right time to bring him into this club. I think he's done a fantastic job at Livingston, especially on the budget that they're on. He is very much overachieved in that way. However, I don't think he's the right fit at this current time for Hearts. I also think, however, Robbie Nielsen is under so much pressure and he needs to get the next three performances and results right. Usually it's just the results and if he can't get the results, you'd much rather have that over the performances. But the performances really have not been convincing. Even in attack, even in defence, and especially in midfield, it's been poor. I believe he should still try the 4-3-3. Everyone's been clamouring for it, and it is better than the five-back. I do worry he'll go back to the five-back, or three-back, if you want to call it that, at Simmering at home, just to try and be a bit safe there as well. Which... <laughs> It'll be annoying, yes, but it makes sense if he wants to go back to it. However, if he sticks with the 4-3-3, the way he works is by changing that 4-3-3 to a 4-2-3-1 and playing Snodgrass in a number 10 free roll position where someone like Cammy Devlin and George Grant, they've got to work even harder to give him a lot more creative freedom and give him a lot more space, give him a lot more options, get, get players running off him as well. I think in the 4-3-3 or the 4-2-3-1, however you really want to play it, I think the team should really just be Xander Clark, obviously injury depending on him as well. I think Michael Smith at right back, however, I do think we need a new right back as well. Nicky Devlin looks pretty good in the summer. Alex Cochran at left back with the back two being Kai Riles and Toby Civic. And as well as that, you've got Cammy Devlin in the hole, being a pest, making sure he comes back from his concussion injury all right. And if he's not fit, you put in Peter Haring, who should be fit by now. As well as that, you play Grant and Snodgrass, and you give him as much cover as he possibly can get in there as well. We need to try and unlock the creative sparks in him as well. So play around him, play to his strengths, and give him the ball as much as possible. As well as that, play Ginelli on one wing and play Cool on the other wing. I always butcher his name so I can apologise, but give him a chance. I know he's a big hot topic as well, that he only gets 15 minute cameos. Yes, he's only 18, but there's a reason Newcastle want him. And what have we got to lose? If he's not performing, just bring on Barry Mackay, bring on someone else there. And then, up top, 
put Lauren Shankland. Do not play him in the number 10 position. Do not play him out wide. Don't play him in the midfield, where I feel like he's been playing a lot. Have him as the number 9. Get him back to scoring goals. So, after all this, where does it leave Hearts? Well, it leaves us in third, a point above Aberdeen. Now, we need to create a gap as big as possible away from them. Is it likely? No. Could it happen? Yeah. Who knows? You never know in football. One or two results, it could absolutely change everything. Now, where does it leave Robbie Nielsen? It leaves him needing to get third place, if not third, fourth as a minimum. Otherwise, he is a man under a lot of trouble, basically, after he was so far ahead in third and he's let it slip. Now, if you've gotten it this far in the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, fair enough, I don't blame you. I've kind of wanted to do some YouTube videos and some other stuff basically like this for a while. However, I've just, I've either been very nervous to do so or I've just not known exactly what it is that I've wanted to post. Will I do more videos? Who knows, hopefully. <laughs> Will I be better at them? Hopefully so as well. But thank you very much for watching. I very much appreciate it.